For our last story tonight, let's turn our attention to South Africa. There was an uproar in the city of Cape Town yesterday. A disgusting smell had blanketed parts of the city. Residents were horrified. They raised multiple complaints. The city officials scrambled to find the source. Eventually, they traced the sewage smell to a ship, a docked ship called the Al Kuwait. How was a ship able to stink up a city? Because of what it was carrying. The Al Kuwait was transporting 19,000 live cattle, carrying them from Brazil to Iraq. The animals had been on board, on board the ship for days, sitting in their own filth while being transported for the slaughter. The smell was bad enough to cause a city to choke up. It raises questions about the global livestock transport industry and the conditions animals are subjected to. Here's our report. A foul smell swept across South Africa's Cape Town yesterday. Residents were left horrified as the putrid stench covered parts of the city. They complained to Cape Town's mayoral office, which scrambled to identify the cause. These were the urgent updates from a member of the Water and Sanitation Department. You can see how he was trying to reassure Cape Town residents and the urgency with which the investigation was being conducted. It just hints at how awful the smell must have been. Eventually, the source was discovered. It was a ship, the Al Kuwait. It was carrying 19,000 cattle, taking them from Brazil to Iraq. The cattle had already spent two and a half weeks on board. They still had days to go before arriving at their destination. But already, the smell was described as unimaginable. A South African animal welfare organization was monitoring the situation. It's called the National Council of Societies for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They boarded the ship, took stock of the situation and issued a statement. They said the smell was due to a build-up of feces and ammonia. This is from thousands of animals who had been at sea for weeks. They added that the cattle were confined to cramped quarters with limited ventilation and hygiene. This is the state of the livestock transport industry. Thousands of animals are crammed on a ship. They have to endure stormy seas and the harsh sun stewing in their own filth until they reach their destination, when they are then killed and turned into food. The Cape Town ship isn't even the worst example of cruelty this month. On January 5th, a ship set sail from Australia. It was going to Israel, carrying about 14,000 sheep and 2,000 cattle. But as the ship approached its destination, it was ordered to turn back. It was at risk of getting attacked by the Yemen-based Houthis in the Red Sea. So the ship returned to Australia. Then it spent days off the coast of Western Australia while the authorities inspected it. The animals on board had to suffer even longer while all this went on. They were eventually allowed to disembark after over six weeks at sea. You can imagine the smell and the horrid conditions. So they would have been waist deep or knee deep in their own waist. Not ideal conditions at all. That's putting it mildly. These are the prevailing conditions in the global live export industry. Every year, millions of animals suffer this fate, eventually to end up on someone's plate. The exports help people in countries at risk of famine. But do we need to make the animals go through such cruel conditions? Live transport may be cheaper than transporting meat in cold storage. But does the cost justify the cruelty? Cape Town got a whiff of the horrid conditions animals are subjected to. It should be a wake-up call and force us to find alternatives to this foul situation.